Howdy folks, this is Bob from Bob's EV Garage and today we're going to have a look inside this old Digitech 1500VA UPS that I got out of the scrap heap. So this one's broken, doesn't turn on, um, so I'm, I'm thinking there's a fuse blown or the batteries are bad or a mixture of many of those things. But either way, I want to take it apart because I'm curious and if we can get it back working again, I'm going to use it for my workstation. Let's do it! Okay, so we've got our system here. We've got two 7 amp hour NBN style batteries linked in series for a 24 volt system. Um, I'll just remove these cables. Uh, very, very minimalistic driver board here. Uh, I suspect uh, there might be a micro circuit on the back. Yes, there is. Um, we've got our main H bridge here. So this isn't a um, push pull style of um, inverter. It's got a series of eight MOSFETs, two in parallel and then connected in a H style of configuration, which means that you only need two wires going to the transformer rather than three, one being the center and then the outer two being the connections to the MOSFETs. I see we have two 40 amp fuses here, so they're expecting a maximum of no more than 80 amps going through here at any one point, and that makes sense. 1500 VA unit, the actual watt rating is a lot less. 1500 VA, I reckon if you got 800 watts out of this, you'd be, you know, yeah, that'd be good. Um, and 800 watts at 24 volts. Um, maths is not so good right now, but you're looking at less than 40 amps. So, you know, it's nothing near the fuse rating. And plus these wires, they get very, very hot before the fuse blows. Looking, we've got a whole bunch of relays here and these will be the uh, AVR functionality. So if the voltage is sagging, but it's not too low where it has to click onto battery mode, this will use the transformer as a step up transformer. So it'll actually boost up the voltage a little bit so that your computer or your devices get the right voltage that's required. I uh, see we have some sort of um, MOSFET here. I, sus I suspect rather that that's the charging um, MOSFET. They're generally smaller and they um, they just kind of sit there and heat up a little bit while they're charging the batteries, just burning off some excess energy. Um, although that really does depend on the design because sometimes these systems use uh, the H-bridge because each MOSFET has a diode in it. So when you're providing power back into the H-bridge, it actually becomes a full bridge rectifier which can be used to um, charge the batteries just directly back through. Interesting little side note there. <laughs> We've got our current sensing transformer. This is just a ferrite core with a single turn and then a bunch of turns here. And uh, when current goes through that single turn, the voltage or the, the magnetism produced is then turned into a much larger voltage because of the ratio between one and many windings. The voltage is boosted which means that this can measure how much current is actually actually being used by the unit or produced by the unit. Uh, and that's just a protection measure. We've got a beeper here, a little connection to the front. Um, that's about it. I'm not really seeing too much more to include. We've got one filter capacitor here. You can tell this is not meant to be an inverter by any sort of standards, not one that runs for a while anyway, because one filter capacitor for this size unit is just nothing. A proper inverter for 1500 watts should have a whole bank of capacitors that would probably take up half of this circuit board. Um, so this this circuit's pretty much only good for a couple minutes of use. Um, so I wouldn't recommend this if you're trying to modify it for extended use. You'd want a fan right on top of it if you did, but it, I don't think it would last that long or be particularly powerful either. Our transformer, a uh, very generic one, it's rated 15.5 volts on the output, uh, that's AC, it steps up because DC, the, you take like the peak of the AC waveform, which is 
just slightly higher than the rated AC voltage. This is super confusing stuff, I don't fully understand it yet. Um, but there's something about RMS voltage, which is just slightly lower than the peak, and it's what it averages out to in AC. But then DC takes the peak voltages of the AC, so it's just slightly higher. I've completely confused you and myself, haven't I? <laughs> Either way, you see these taps on the transformer on the high voltage side. We've got a 0 volt, 198 volt, 230 and 267 volt tap. And that, that's what is used to boost up the voltage or reduce it when it's not outside of the, uh, of the safe boundary. Um, there you go. And unlike many UPSs these days, it actually has just direct Australian outlets on the back. A lot of UPSs have proprietary outlets or um, kettle cord outlets which you have to buy a specific adapter for, especially with APC. They're very bad about that. That's really annoying. Um, but you know, this one just has standard outlets that you can plug something into, so very easy to use. I suggest that we test these batteries to see if they're any good. Okay, got the handy dandy multimeter here. Let's check the voltage of our battery pack. Yes. 4 volts on the batteries, definitely bad batteries, um, probably won't be able to revive those, so what do we do? Um, I don't have replacements for these right now, uh, I might get them for a future part of the video, we'll see about that, um, but for now, I think I'll call it there, um, there could be a video of me turning this into a more long term backup, so you know, maybe able to run for 30 minutes in the case of a blackout or something, just to show you guys how you might do it. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching, guys. It's just a quick one, me blabbing about a UPS a little bit. Um, if you like this content, press the like button, subscribe, all of that. Um, as always, leave a comment if you're interested and you have a project idea for me. Anyway, guys, bless you. Hope you have a great evening wherever you are. Um, see ya!